Hello everyone, my name is Jose Garcia here at Jive Engineering and today I'm going to show you how you can create a chamfer operation in NX. So as you can see here, I have a very simple piece of geometry. It's just a block with a chamfer on it. I've already activated the cam environment. I have specified the part and I've specified the stock. Uh, and I've also created a tool here in my machine tool view. So as you can see, I have a chamfer mill over here. If you're curious what the dimensions are for this thing, you can see it right there. Ignore the flute length. That's just, you know, exaggerated. Nonetheless, however, uh, there's my chamfer mill right here. Okay. Now you usually get these dimensions from a manufacturer. For example, we at Java Engineering get most of our tools from MSC Industrial Supply. Uh, and one of their popular lines is the AccuPro line so we usually get this information from uh, MSC Industrial Supply or AccuPro and so the goal here is to create a chamfer okay now creating a chamfer in NX requires a little bit of in-depth knowledge of how the tool operation works but let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna come up here and say create operation okay now what we're going to create is actually a planar profile. So go ahead and select planar profile. And if you recall, I made a video a while back that shows you the importance of establishing child parent relationships. If you haven't seen that, I'll post a link to that below. But as you can see, I have to specify my program, which by default is just set to program. The tool is going to be the chamfer mill and the geometry is going to be the workpiece, and the method is going to be a mill finish. Okay, and here's where you name it. So I'll just call this chamfer profile and then hit OK. All right, so let's just let that do its thing. And you come up with this. The first thing it's asking you for is to specify a part boundary. Okay, so this is where things get a little spicy. At this point, you have to basically tell NX what edge you want your chamfer mill to kiss so that it can create the chamfer mill. And in reality, there are really two options you can choose here. You can choose the bottom edge here of the chamfer, or you can choose the top edge of the chamfer. I'm going to choose the bottom edge, so I'm going to go ahead and say specify part boundaries. And instead of saying, oh, I'm going to choose a face, I'm going to change this to curves. And from here, I will set this boundary type to close because this is obviously a closed loop. So I'm going to go ahead and just start selecting these bottom edges. One, two, three, and oops. Oh, no. Uh, let me go ahead and try that again. Let's try that one more. There we go. And there's one more over here. Okay. So I accidentally hit the middle mouse button and it added a new set. But as you can see, I've selected everything and it's a closed loop. There's no errors down there. There are no errors that we need to be aware of. Now the boundary type is set to close. The tool side is set to outside, right? So we want the chamfer mill to go outside. And if I look at it from this view, you see this little ball right here? That is the side where the chamfer is going to engage and do its tool path. The plane, we're going to leave it as is. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK on this. OK. Now, we have already established what edge we want NX to kiss, right? So now we need to tell NX how we want the chamfer mill to engage that uh, edge. And in a chamfer mill, there are really only two standard points, right? Let's take a look at them. I'm going to expand this tool option and I'm going to go ahead and say edit slash display. This will allow you to see the chamfer mill over here. Now if you notice there are a couple of names here that you should be aware of. There's sys cl shoulder, sys od shoulder, sys od chamfer and sys cl tip. These are what are known as tracking points and these points are what kiss that edge of your chamfer okay so you can use really any of these points to tell NX oh I want you to use that to kiss that edge in my case however none of these work for me so you can actually create your own 
if I want to create my own tracking point, I can come up here into the more option. And in the tracking section, I can hit this little button that says tracking points. Okay. So here are all of the default ones that we saw earlier. I'm going to hit add a new set. It says duplicate traffic. Blah, 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 so go ahead and say okay. And go ahead and give this a name. So I'll just, I'll just call this my TP. Okay. Now you have two options to define your tracking point. You can do a full or by diameter. I'm going to go ahead and choose by diameter. What does that mean? It means that if you enter a diameter here anywhere where the intersection occurs, if it equals that diameter, it's going to put a tracking point on that location. I know it's very hard to explain, so let me show it to you. If I enter zero, it's going to go right to the tip because, well, at that point, there is no intersection, so it's just zero. If I type in 0 0.25, it goes to the middle of this chamfer length. See that? And if I type in 0 0.5, well, it goes all the way to the point of the shank diameter. Okay. If you recall, when I showed you the, the, the dimensions and the parameters of the chamfer mill, the diameter was half of an inch. Okay. So at this point, you have to decide where you want your tracking point to go. I never like to use the number zero uh, because, as we all know, chamfers are not perfect. We don't live in a perfect world, so we have to give it a little bit of clearance. So I'm going to say that I want 0 0.05, so 50 thou. As you can see, at this point where my point is, if you take a plane and intersect this chamfer mill with that plane parallel to this top face, you will see that at that point the diameter is 50 thou. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say OK on this. I'm going to say OK on this as well. And as you can see, now I have the option to do a drive point. Okay? And I can drop this little guy down and choose the one that says My TP. Click it. And believe it or not, you are actually done. You don't have to do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this little generate button. And as you can see, it's engaging this uh, block like so. I'm going to hit the OK button here. Of course, you would set your feeds and speeds. But let's hit the OK button here. And let's see what the IPW looks like. If I hit this little button that says Show 3D IPW, uh, once it loads, as you can see, it does exactly what we expect it to. I'll hide the other model here. Let's see if I can hide it, get rid of it. Hit the F5 button. I'll hit Control B. I'll hide this thing. And now we can say Show 3D IPW. Okay. As you can see, that's the in process workpiece. So in real life, this is what you would see uh, come out of your machine. If you want to see it in action, for example, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and select that chamfer profile toolpath and I can say verify toolpath uh, I can go to the 3D dynamic and just make this really slow and as you can see that's what it comes out with exactly what we expect it to now you could have chose the top edge for your chamfer uh, the only difference is that your tracking point would actually have to be closer to the shank diameter other than that, though, there would be nothing wrong with you choosing this top edge. So I hope this video helped you out in establishing how to create a chamfer. I struggled with this one a lot, and I couldn't find any videos to talk about it. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight. If you need further assistance, feel free to shoot an email our way, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.